Another car is coming. Yep. That, that's why I didn't fuck up. <laughs> it's like kids, like, car! Car, yeah. <laughs> All right, here we go. Hey, everyone, my name's Jace. Mine's Snoot. And we're your community managers. Welcome back to another Patch Notes video uh, because update four has been released on Experimental. That's right. And me and Jace are going to go on a little treasure hunt in our new office that's currently being renovated to uncover all the secrets in update four. That's right. Snoot and I are going to be going on a treasure hunt in our new office that's currently being renovated to uncover all the secrets of update four. That's what I just said, dude. And in order to do that, we need to do three things. We need to restore power to the basement. We need to find the key to the top floor. And then we need to find the secret door to uncover the final secret of update four. All right, let's go. Vamanos! So here we are in the main hall of our new office. But how do we get to the basement? Do you know how to get to the basement? What are you doing? Behind us. Look, Snoot, a clue. Did you like put that there or? We can play it in that machine over there. Feast your eyes on the marvels of Update 4. In the new Spangled Update by Coffee Stain Studios, the new and shiny Tier 8 is finally going to be available. And in Tier 8, there's going to be numerous wonderful sights. But before we get into that, let's revisit some of the aspects of Tier 7. Now, Tier 7 is getting a little bit of a makeover, you see, along with some new things. Based on feedback, our vision for Tier 8 has changed, and because of that, we need to rebalance Tier 7 a smidge to justify that change, as we found that Tier 7 was just a bit too complex. Now I know everyone loves complexity, but the goal for Tier 7 was to introduce new and interesting recipes, while the goal with Tier 8 is to take that knowledge and challenge you with more complex ones. Some of the changes include battery production being reworked, bauxite refinement and aluminium production has been rebalanced to reduce complexity and scale. And the amount of refineries. That's right, Jace. We've also moved turbo motors and supercomputers to Tier 8, and we've slightly changed recipes for parts such as the radio control unit, outclad sheets, batteries, and iodine-infused filters. We're also adding nitrogen gas to the game, which can be extracted from a new resource node type we've added called Resource Wells. Resource Wells consist of a main node and nearby satellite nodes. You simply place a pressurizer on the main node that then activates the satellite nodes, which can then be extracted via pipes using an extractor. Oil and water resource wells will also be added as an additional method of extracting oil and water. Another thing we've added is a new building called the Blender. It will blend liquids and gases together with other resources to be able to construct fused modular frames nitric acid, and more. And, in fact, there's a significant change in how encased uranium cells are produced. These will now be produced in the blender as well, and will no longer require uranium pellets, which have been removed from the game. Nuclear uranium waste can now be turned into plutonium. Non-fissile uranium can be extracted from nuclear waste, turned into plutonium pellets, and eventually make plutonium fuel rods. This means that you can finally get rid of your nuclear waste. Well, sort of. Because plutonium also produces waste, but it builds up much slower. It's also a lot more radioactive, you see, but that shouldn't be an issue if you store it far enough away from your base. And that concludes our regularly scaled television program on this secret tape. And now I'm gonna eat biscuits. That's a lot of information. Can you say information? That doesn't tell us anything on how to get to the basement. You'll find the basement by walking down the stairs. Ooh. Let's go, Zapatos! <laughs> Nearly died. Hmm. We need to find a fuse to fix the power. I'll check in here. While Snit looks for the fuse, I'll tell you about some of the upcoming changes to power in Update 4. One of which is a new building called the Power Storage. Power storages allow players to store excess power, which can then be used when or if consumption exceeds production. We've all done it. We've all been there. We've all hooked up a freshly built section of our factories to the power grid, only to hear the dreaded... Power storages will help buy you time in these cases. But there are other changes that'll make use of the power storage as well, right, Snoot? No. Oh. Just kidding. We've actually changed it so that power generators are no longer self-regulating. 
Previously, generators would only produce as much power as the factory was consuming, but generators now always produce the full amount of power, with the exception of biomass burners, and this will mean that you will likely produce excess power, which can be saved up in power storages. Geothermal is getting a change too. Instead of supplying a static amount of power, geothermal generators will now provide a fluctuating amount of power, but you can use the power storage to help smooth over production for a more stable output. We're also adding power switches that can be used to enable and disable the connection between parts of the power grid, and you can name them for better organization. Ooh, I think I got it. <gasps> ah, shit. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, I got it. Wait, one second. Wait for it. Any, wait, wait, I, wait for it. Bam, I bet you didn't see this one coming. We're adding lights to the game. Ooh, lights. Now your game can be brighter than my future. There are three different types of lights. There's big ceiling lights, perfect for indoors. There's tall spotlight towers, primarily used for outside areas. And street lights that are mostly there for decoration. Oh, and you can set their color and brightness too. You did it, Snoop. Best day of my life. Now that we fixed the power in the basement, we can go look for the key. Vamanos. His accent is so good, it's like I'm in France. <laughs> hmm, I wonder where the key could be. It's probably one of the boxes at Earl's office. You're right, Snit. See, Erison and Tonto. Why didn't I think of that? So do you want to get them or? Yeah, yeah but you need a car. Yeah, we'll keep our car. Yeah. car. Maybe. Yeah. yeah Wait, what's that sound? It's coming from over here. Oh boy, it's actually happening, you guys. Drones are here. They're designed for long range, low resource transport. They can't carry many resources at a time, but they're doing their best. Each port can only contain one drone, but move across the map extremely quickly and are far easier to set up than trains, belts, or trucks. Drones require batteries as fuel, and their consumption rate and travel speed become more efficient as delivery distances increase. Simply put down a drone port at two separate locations, slap a drone on one or both to increase throughput, connect your ports, hook up your batteries, and the drone will fly back and forth delivering whatever you put in the port. What a mess. You know what would have made searching around easier? If we had a hover pack, which the game now has. The hover pack uses power from the grid to function by wirelessly connecting to nearby power connections like power poles or the connectors on buildings. And it allows players to fly through the factory and hover in mid-air. Not the fastest way to get around, but definitely the best option for pioneers looking to get a good overview of their production lines and to build from a higher vantage point. Whoa, Jace, look. This is a real life lizard doggo. Oh my God, it's so cute. I know, right? Wait, Jace, watch out. It's coming right for us. It dropped something. It's a key. Now that we got the key, where do we go next? Is that right? Where do we go? Mm -hmm. Yep. We fixed the power in the basement. Check. We got the key. Check. So next is... Just say it already. Top four, correcto, Entrada Secreta, vamanos. This sucks. At least in the game, we've added more traversal options where you can now use zip lines to travel from power pole to power pole in your base. We made it to the top floor. Now I wonder where that door could be. <sighs> Kill me. There it is. <sighs> All right, Jace, this is it. Behind this door is the final secret of update four. Let's open it.
Holy shit! It's the artist formerly known as the Hadron Collider! The Particle Accelerator! That's right, this baby is a top-tier manufacturing building and it consumes so much power. The power requirements vary per recipe and always fluctuate, so check your power grid before using these bad boys and consider utilizing power storages. It's used to produce plutonium pellets for the plutonium production line and also project part number 9, nuclear pasta. Wow, that sure is a lot of stuff coming Update for us, Nerd. That's right, Jace. And all that stuff is available right now on the Experimental Branch. Now, not everything in Update 4 has made it into this video, including things like UI changes, optimizations, bug fixes, and more. But if you want all of the gory details, we'll leave a link in the description below for you to check that out. That's right. So enjoy your drones and shit. Have a fantastic day. And I hope you had fun watching this video. I know I did. Bye! Bye.